Do you see us? All right, we should be connected. I'm hitting record. This meeting is being recorded. And go. Yay, we are live. All righty, everybody. Welcome to the Lunch Bunch at the Spiritual Neighborhood. The Spiritual Neighborhood is a grassroots community project of the Council for Families for Children, dedicated to the quality of life for the body, mind, and spirit for the integration of a happy, healthy human. And today, we want to welcome our, our volunteer, Betty, our number one fan to our Yay! show. Just so you know what we're doing, Betty is going to uh, be watching for your questions. And when she raises her hand and let us know, then she will read them out and one of us will answer them. So please take time to ask questions for uh, one of us and, and especially our guest, Anne. Um, Anne, uh, welcome back. This is your second time and we're so happy you're with us. Um, Anne has 30 years in, uh, of experience um, with the media world and uh, she supports a professional women over 50 to play their strengths and reach beyond their limitations and leave a legacy of generations to come. For those of you who are looking for meaning and a deeper mission and while remaining in harmony with the demands of the market and society and guides her clients to a place of a bigger purpose, greater success, and irrational growth, both personally and professionally. Anne believes everyone is unique and important and has a contribution to the earth and her work is a masterpiece at helping her people to write the script now for the life they desire to live tomorrow. So explain that to us, Anne. Well, um, <laughs> which, which part of that? That's what I was going to say. Which part? <laughs> Unfortunately, even my short bio, as you were reading that, seemed really long. So, <laughs> oh, wow. particular, what, what would you like to know about in that? Well, so talk about, you know, I really am interested in how you, to help women over 50. Um, there's just a lot of us that have been mothers and wives and doing for others. And now we're coming out and saying, okay, it's my time. And so how do we go up about helping those people that are just coming out of that and wanting to do more? Well, I think there's a lot of ways. Some of the ways that I help women do that is through coaching. Uh, so I am a trained coach, went to a school uh, named Coach for Life. And um, one of the things I loved about their training was they reminded me how integrated our business professional life is and our personal life. I mean, when I show up at work, I'm still Ann Ransom. And so part of it is in some activities, some guided visualizations that help people get in touch with who their true essence is. Um, I do workshops. Um, I think I talked the last time a little bit about the transformation game, which again, depending on how the earth opens up over the next month or two, I'll be facilitating a game this summer that is a board game, but it really is a tool for self-discovery. So you roll the dice and you move around the board, but when you land on squares, you land on an angel square, as an example, you land on a setback square. And what makes this game so unique and powerful for the individual who's playing is you set a very specific intention before you play the game. So maybe you're dealing with work issues and you don't know, let's go back to your original question, Gail. You know what, I wanna understand what is my passion or my purpose for however many years I have left. So what happens in the game, it's all divinely guided, is you will find every angel card you draw, every setback, insight, whatever square you land on, the cards you draw will be exactly, I mean exactly what you need to hear around what your intention is. So that's another way um, that I work with women on that. I do some public workshops. Finding Peace in Everyday Life is one that I introduced about a year ago. Um, part of it starts with um, us giving ourselves the gift of time. You know, we're so busy, we're so overscheduled, in my opinion, 
um, people say, well, you know, I don't know how to meditate or, or I pray, but I never get an answer. And I said, well, when was the last time you sat quietly and just listen? So it's like, oh, well, I don't have time for that. Or we don't have the, we don't have the skill for that. Our society values what we're doing, how many things we're checking off the list. Our society doesn't value us sitting in the living room in a chair for 30 minutes, not with any particular agenda, not to meditate in the formal sense, because I think that intimidates a lot of people. So those are some of the ways that I work with women to help them identify. And through the personal coaching, we can really kind of drill down on purpose and passion. You know, and I got to ask you a question. I don't know how other women felt when they turned 50, but my first reaction was, is that I'm supposed to have all the answers now. I'm 50. I'm the old crone, you know, the wise woman. How come I don't have my shit together yet? You know, uh, and how come I don't have a, a plan for the rest of my life until the day I die? And how come I don't know this? And how come I don't know that? What's that all about, do you think? Because I bet other women feel the same way. Well, again, it's those messages our society sends us, you know? Okay, so you finished with this section of your life where you were the mother and you, and you paid attention to them. So, you know, you've lived this many years on the planet. Well, you know, some of us came in as old souls. From, I mean, I have a niece, I swear from the moment I saw her, days old, it was like, oh my God, this is an old, wise soul. When I see her, I see a wise old woman. And then there's others of us that, you know, have come in with a whole different agenda. And so I think a lot of it, Deborah, is we've got to quit listening to all of that out there. And we've got to start listening to ourselves. And they're not often in sync. Well, and, and I know... I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I, I wonder if other women feel this way. I feel like I had my young years and in my young years, I was seen as really savvy and on the ball and, you know, wiser than my age and all of a sudden. And as I, then I felt like I just kind of skipped the middle years that, because I went from being young and wise to old and discredited. And, you know, walking through the store, you can see people look at you and they go, and you can see that they're thinking, oh, there's an old woman. And I'm not used to that. Yeah, you know. And well, I hear that from other women a lot. I have a friend, his name is Charlie Thweet. Um, if y'all aren't familiar with him, he is a fabulous musician. He's a new, he doesn't call himself a new age musician, I do. Um, and he has a song and it's called Take Your Power Back. And I think part of what's going on in the world on a hundred different levels is it is time for us to take our power back and quit listening to all those voices and to as we get quiet and as we allow ourselves to love ourselves right where we are with all our warts and you know all our good bad and the ugly then i think that's what helps us get over a lot of those things that society wants to put on us because the truth is, um, we know more than, you know more than you did yesterday. You know more than you did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And uh, just because society doesn't value it, doesn't mean that you shouldn't. And I say you in the, sure, you know, sure. we're all in this together. I really, we're all trying to find our way back to our power in the midst of all of this noise. I really did not get how society sees older people um, until recently I was involved in a Facebook thread and there was a lot of disagreement going back and forth between a lot of people and it was ages all over the board and somebody came back and said, well, okay, boomer. And I was like, well, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> and fortunately, my husband's 12 years younger than I am and he explained, he goes, that's an insult. And I said, why is that an insult? He goes, basically, they just called you old. And I'm like, okay, well, I've had enough of that crap, you know? So, you know, um, it does seem to be, a, a, and all the things that are going on in this day and age, another divide that we have is among the age groups. And I just, 
I don't remember feeling that way when I was younger. I liked older people when I was younger. All my friends were older than me, you know? So that was, that just really caught me off guard. Well, and I know for me, part of my own spiritual practice is when I react to something out there, something somebody puts on Facebook or they make a comment like that about age, um, I, I, this is my belief system that when I react to something, it means they touch a chord mm -hmm. that resonates within me. And I'm afraid what they're saying is true. Right. What if I really am old? What if I am out of touch? What if I am irrelevant? <laughs> See, I think one of the biggest things that women in particular face as we age is our fear of losing relevance. Right. I think you're right. I do. Ah. I do. Yeah. I'm just too dense to get insulted. I, I He was insulting me and I didn't get insulted because I didn't know what it meant. I'm so out of touch. <laughs> yeah. well, and then, you know, I, I'm not going to play that game anymore, though, Deborah. That's what I'm coming to. I go back to uh, Don Miguel Ruiz for agreements. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to take things personal. Uh, of course, right this minute, I can't. <laughs> remember what the four are. I, I reread that book every year, uh, but they're good. Whatever they are, they're really good. Um, so basically it's I be a decent think, person and, you know, and be kind no matter what, and don't put your emotions between you and the other person. That's, that's it in a nutshell, you know? Well, and you know, that's theirs. How I react is mine. That's right. That's right. You know, well, I ran out and bought the game. Oh, you did? I did. And I'm going to tell you what, it is overwhelming to open. I have not played it yet because I spent an hour punching out all the little cards and stuff and putting them in their own little yes. Ziploc bags and everything and all that. And I went, well, crap, now I'm exhausted. I don't want to play. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is fun even by yourself, Deborah. Is it? I, you know, maybe once a year I'll play it by myself. Well, it's on the agenda for this weekend when uh, when my husband's off and he and I are going to do it. So I'm glad you reminded us it's about setting the intent because I was just going to go in there hairy scary and just throw those dice and see where they land. So. No, in fact, in my opinion, setting a good, clear, specific intention is the most, if you want to really get information, if you really want to learn and grow from the experience, set a very specific intention. Don't let it be, you know, I want to feel better. Well, in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, about yeah. what? Yeah. So that when insights come, you go, oh my God, that's exactly right. I didn't know I was doing that or I forgot about that. So really that intention is very important. Well, I'm glad you said that. So um, I have a question. Yes. Gail, how long does that game take? How long does it take to play the game? You mean Deborah? No, Anne. <laughs> oh, Ann. Oh, we went around the board. <laughs> Whoever wants to answer that question, anybody <laughs> will answer that question. It can take. Yeah, how um, long does it take to play that particular game? <laughs> it can take um, a few hours or I normally play it, it takes a day and a half. Oh my God, wow. really? Because now, so I went to Finthorn, Scotland where the game was uh, originated and a uh, two week training course. And I know Elizabeth has done these. I don't know Deborah and Gail and Betty what y'all's backgrounds are, but I've taken a million training courses oh. in my lifetime and this kicked my, well, it kicked your fanny. This is one of the most <laughs> intense training. Two weeks. Wow. One day off, about 10 to 12 hours a day. Oh my uh, gosh. Dang. Game is now, I've learned I like geek. And so when I play and I'm. Uh, and I'm actually playing, not just acting as the facilitator. I want to keep digging and digging mm -hmm. and digging because I want to get everything there is to learn out of that. I have learned through the training and through trying to do it a different way. I've now done games in four or five hours that were extremely beneficial. 
I would not have thought that possible prior to the training because I had only played it in those one and two day versions. Now, when I play it by myself, it's a couple of hours. Okay, I'm just overwhelmed even thinking about that. That's incredible. I mean, we uh, we just went through um, oh, a reading, I guess, for lack of a better word, the, the three of us, Saturday, and it was an hour and a half, almost two hours, and I was exhausted. Yeah, I was exhausted from all the information afterward. You yeah, know? it was a lot to absorb. It was. so. It was wonderful. It was all wonderful. Oh, yeah. 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 What I have found, particularly if y'all were doing it on Zoom, I have found, because I did facilitate a game that I played in with my family and friends every Good Friday, every year we play the transformation game because I believe I've been taught that the veil is the thinnest during the time of Good Friday into the resurrection. Oh, wow. So I oh, always wow. play the game. So um, we had to do it by Zoom. And I will tell you, it was um, it was too it was too much. I mean, I literally when we clicked leave on Zoom, I got a glass of water and I went to bed. Wow! Yeah. So there is something about Zoom and the intensity and the energy that seems to magnify a lot of things. I don't find that to be the case, even when I have facilitated very deeply for two days. It does not impact me that same way. So I don't know what that is energetically, but there is something about this format and I don't know if it's, because I don't know anything about, what is it called, quantum physics and all those kinds of things. So I don't know if it's right. at that level that this is happening or if it's just the way we participate in these calls, I don't know. Well, I know this. I have to watch my electromagnetic field around electronics. And this has been measured in a doctor's office scientifically with all these little doodads on my head and body. And if I do not keep myself well grounded, I burn up electronics. So doing Zoom and stuff like this can be exhausting for me if I'm in that frame of mind of keeping myself grounded. Other days, it's no big deal because I'm, I'm not fully engaged energetically, you know, but... Um, so, so that reminds me of a story, but I don't know what else y'all want me to talk about. Or can I tell I want story? a story. Tell me the story. <laughs> a story. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 35 years ago-ish, my brother met a woman whose name was Carla Neff Gordan, and she was a certainly nationally renowned deep trance medium. And um, he went to a program with her, ended up meeting her daughter, and they fell madly in love and got married. Huh? Beautiful, all wonderful. And um, so I, however, thought that was a bunch of voodoo, weird, like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? And I had been in unity, so I thought I was kind of, you know, an enlightened person, but I just thought, I'd never heard of such a thing before. So finally, <laughs> six or nine months later, my brother bought, brought over a cassette to my house because everything was on cassette in those days. And he played me a part of her reading, uh, of his reading with her. And it was talking about our mother who had passed away, I don't know, a year or two before that. Well, I mean, I burst into tears because, of course, she was talking about things that nobody else could have known. And so now I had a dilemma. Yes. It's like, well, I think this is a bunch of weird voodoo stuff, but that's all it landed I being mean, completely. So I think it took me about three months to finally call her to schedule a reading because I think somewhere in me, I knew it was like Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. It's like, I was gonna go see her, ah. it was gonna open up something in me, and I was never gonna go back to being that way again. <laughs> well, which of course is exactly what happened. <laughs> and, um, but you knew, <laughs> but you knew. Well, on a subconscious level, I knew. I don't know if I knew it consciously. <laughs> uh, so I had that first reading. Well, within 
less than six months, I quit my job. I'd never quit a job. I'd never, I mean, well, that's a whole nother story. It's not worth going into. And I decided I was fried. I had been in corporate and I just thought, I just can't do this anymore. So I thought, well, I, I was in a position to take a few months off. Well, about that time, my brother and his wife were expecting a baby. I'm going to try to shorten this story. It's getting too long. Uh, and I said, well, I'll work because Deborah worked for her, my sister-in-law worked for her mother in the office. So I said, I'll fill in so you can take a month or two off when the baby comes. So I started doing that. So now here's the story that all of that is really <laughs> nice. There really is a purpose to this story. Um, Carla could not keep light bulbs in her house <laughs> because of all of the energy from all of those readings and she'd do group intensives and all of that. And they would buy light bulbs by the case. Oh and my God. <laughs> put in new light bulbs and then and like literally two days later, it'd be like, well, I thought you were going to replace the light bulb in the stairwell. And like, well, we did two days ago. So energy works in a lot of interesting ways. And that was just one manifestation. Uh, just to support, I understand what you're saying, Deborah. Um, well, I'm glad you told that story then. <laughs> Seriously. And, and I'd also like to just say a couple words about Carla and her work. Um, unlike any other medium I've worked with, hers, her work was always based in spiritual laws and in spiritual truths. She wasn't so much on, you know, where's my law? Where's, where's my husband? How am I going to get mm -hmm. my husband? Right. right. She might respond to those questions, but it was really more from what's the underlying spiritual issue here that is preventing your husband or you know the money or the whatever the thing you're asking for and, and she began to teach some public programs and i think it was in well i got it right here 95 um she went into trance and she taught and brought through what came to be called the spiritual laws of the earth and it's 33 laws um she was in trance all day long. Well, I mean, for lunch break and that sort of thing. But she brought through these laws and involved, I don't know how much y'all know about how deep trance mediums work, but at least in her case, um, if you have a personal reading, the way she explained what happens is, so I ask, Ann Ranson asks a question and Mary, the guide, that was just the name she chose, she was Mary Guide, would talk to my spirit guides to get the answers, and then right. she would be the mouthpiece for that. So right. on the day that she taught the spiritual laws, there was a whole host of the white brotherhood. I mean, there was somebody in the audience that day that kept asking, tell us who's here, tell us who's here. Um, Abraham Lincoln has shown up on numerous occasions. Spiritual masters came through to deliver this information. And uh, so I've kind of dusted some of that, that stuff off and am starting to read and study that again. She also wrote a book that I'm really studying right now. It's called The Fear Factor. And it's all based in uh, she uses the Psalms, Psalms 23, 46, and 91 as the teaching instrument, if you will. So she takes the 23rd Psalm and teaches us about fear and what the message is through those Psalms. And I believe that what we're going through in earth right now is all rooted in fear. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're afraid we're going to lose control. We're afraid that that person is going to do that thing that we don't like. We're afraid that we're losing our power. We're afraid that we're losing our ability to have freedom. Um, and so the guides always taught us that anger is only fear under pressure. Mm -hmm. So right. when I get angry, my job is to look below that 
What is it I'm afraid of? Am I afraid I'm losing my power? Am I afraid that they think I'm stupid? Am I afraid that I don't know what I'm doing? And of course, all of these are true, you know, in different situations. And so anyway, I just wanted to take a minute just to share a little bit about some of the work that the guides have done and how important I think it is, even if it's not all in the public domain at the moment, um, I do have a desire to get it into the public domain. And I feel that at least by me studying it energetically, I am adding it into the universal <laughs> database, if you will, um, because I think race consciousness has um, kind of got us off track and we're following and goes back to that song, we need to take our power back. Well, and you said that you had been to the Unity Church when, um, when you were there. Did you study the white books and the green books and the blue books from the Ascended Masters? Because those were those were all downloads through uh, through trance, like what you were talking about with this woman, uh, and they're they're just, they're fascinating books. And I don't know why, but that just made me, they're along the same lines of what you're talking about here. They're they're their teachings, further teachings from the Virgin Mary um, and all these different people's names that I can't pronounce. And I think in the white books, there's even some teachings from Jesus Christ in there as well. And um, I have never been a member of Unity Church, but I attended a lot of the classes that they had in t these teachings and stuff. And they're not even available for sale anymore except off one website that's through the organization that kind of I don't want to say guards, but, you know, is responsible for these books and stuff. Are you sure it's unity and not Unitarian? No, I'm not sure because I get the two confused. <laughs> so, no, I'm not sure. Um, okay. The person that was teaching was at the building here in Dallas off the of forest, the church that's on forest, whichever that Okay, was. well, yeah. that is unity. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so, well, I'm going to have to do some checking on that. I mean, I'm familiar with Quiet Eagle. Um, and which is actually trans, um, uh, I mean, um, yeah, channeled material as well. And of course the contemporary person right now that has the most fame, I've seen him on Gail's, uh, page, which is Paul Selig and his material. I've been in the study group studying his material. This is my second year, I guess. I think this is a compilation from a group of uh, back uh, around the turn of the century of the 1900s. And it was my only, first and only exposure to uh, channeled, you know, writings. Uh, and I mean, there's just book after book after book after book. And the, and the some of the stuff I'm like, eh. You know, I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it, but the my whole point is is that if you forget where it, it came from, if it's truth, it's truth, you know? And there's well, so much truth in the books. The guides, yeah, that's what the guides used to teach us. You know, I mean, even though I followed them and studied with this particular group, they said, hold it to your heart. And if it doesn't resonate, you kick it out. It you know, just because we say these things, whether it was Jesus right. or Buddha or whoever, it doesn't resonate for everybody, every word spoken. Well, I but find it fascinating. Is she still alive? She passed away, no, unfortunately. Um, but I'm very grateful. I have copies of about 90% of her teachings, uh, which is like a thousand percent. Wow. Um, and of course, I have not listened to a fraction of them, um, but very profound spiritual teachings. So is this book available on Amazon or do you have to go someplace to get it or? Which book? The, the spiritual fear, laws? No, the fear factor that you were talking oh, about? Oh, the fear factor. You know, they have never published that. I, <gasps> um, her late husband, um, Obviously, I mean, he has control of her estate or what, however you say that. Uh, and I do want to ask him because in particular, I think the fear factor needs to be put out in some form. Yeah. But I don't yeah. have a license to do that myself. Uh, I will be posting, however, at the very back of the booklet um, is a visualization. Uh, I think she calls it a vision for a world without fear. 
and I am going to publish that. Oh, I say publish. I mean, put it on Facebook or, or something because we need this desperately, uh, this uh, vision. It, it was one of the first things that she channeled very early on. And so it's in very antiquated uh, syntax and language. Um, so it's very, it, it, you read something and you have to kind of rearrange it to have it make sense. And so I'm in the process of modernizing at least that vision so that one, I can read it every day because that's the truth that I want to stay focused on and then um, hopefully be able to put that out soon. Well, you, you're you coming back every, every month now, aren't you, Ann? You're going to be with us every month now? I can. Okay. Yeah. So can you come back next time and plan to, to talk more about this part that you want to share that that you the were just... Factor? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would be awesome. I would really like to hear more about that. I have a, another I, question. I have one more question. Can you, can you, before you go, or as you're getting ready to go, can you say what you say at the end of your program when you do your oasis moment? Let me do it right now. <laughs> if, if you're ready to, to do so, yeah. Yeah. So I think it would be prayer. nice. Yeah. It's called the prayer for protection. I learned it in unity. Um, many New Thought churches speak this prayer. I don't know, now that you brought this up, I'm going to do some research and see if I can find who originally, vote, uh, who originally wrote it. But it's called the Prayer for Protection. And uh, so if there's anybody listening, we just, you know, take a deep breath and just come into this moment. And the prayer is the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. Amen. That's nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we're going to see you back. Tell them how to get a hold of you while you're on. Uh... Oh, yes, thank you. So my website is my name, Ann Ranson, and uh, I've learned to spell that because some people say I have a bit of an accent. <laughs> I don't know why they say that. In fact, when I went to Finhorn to do that training, you know how you go around the circle and everybody says, my name is Ann and I'm from Texas. And I saw this woman, you know, kind of elbowing the woman next to her going, what does she say? Well, <laughs> When I say Anne, it is, you know, that's one syllable, you would think. But I, I managed to get two or three syllables in there. So it's A-N-N-R-A-N-S-O-N.com. <laughs> that's how you reach me. And my email is Anne at Anne Ransom. If you want to know about um, anything having to do with the spiritual laws, fear factor, if you're a woman over 50, and one of these days we'll talk about my tea business because that's fun too. Yes. Oh, I forgot oh about yes. that. Well, you should have tea on when we're talking and drink yeah. it so we can. Oh, it's awesome. It well, is absolutely fabulous. fabulous. Do you have a shop? Do you have a, a shop somewhere? I have an online store. Cool. It's called By the Grace of Tea. By the grace of tea.com. I love that. What's your favorite yeah, flavor? What's your favorite? What's my favorite? Every day I drink, uh, all my teas are named for different values. So my favorite tea is actually called Zesty. <laughs> but I have civility and clarity and prosperity and possibility and uh, authenticity and serenity and on and on. Can you make a new flavor? I could. I need one that says no more cussing. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I need that real bad. Maybe on your Profanity. Own. Profanity. There you go. No, I don't. There I'm not profane. Go. I cuss. <laughs> I cuss. Okay, and I, I won't claim any residuals, but profanity. <laughs> oh, that is too good, Elizabeth. No profanity. But if you get profanity, then you would cuss. No profanity. Uh -huh. Okay, to be for it to be pro profanity. For it to be profanity, I would have to be a lot more eloquent. This is just coarse. It's cussing. Okay? <laughs> no more cussing by Anne. <laughs> yeah.
See, I got that syllable thing going on. <laughs> that's an intention that you could take into the gate, Deborah. Oh. Well, see, that's my problem, oh. man. Uh, shut up. So yeah, that's my problem. You don't want to <laughs> set an intention of not to do something. You want to set an intention to affirm the opposite. See, I don't want to really quit cussing. and that's the problem. <laughs> Well, then don't. You know, but everyone says, you really should do that because people would give you more credibility. You know? I, 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 I think it's just the F word that we, I think everybody says all, all the other words, but I just think the F word is the strongest word. Maybe that's offensive. I don't know. See, like, we've gotten used to it. Then you got used to it. <laughs> they're dangerous. They're dangerous. Well, they, did, they say people that cuss are more intelligent because, because they are not using their full capacity of brain power and what other side says is people that cuss are extremely intelligent and I like that one I like that one <laughs> I do have I, I have been IQ tested but they want to know if I had a high IQ if I was insane I tested on the high IQ side not the insane <laughs> side <laughs> well there you go I tried to hide that though <laughs> And you're always. Well, I think it's it's hard to change things unless we really, 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 really want. It. See, I don't really want to. That's the problem, right. and so I have to change my heart to want to. That's the problem because I actually went five years and never cussed, and it was miserable. Well, <laughs> and you know, one of the things I would love to do with you, Anne, is once quarantine is over, is us ladies coming together and doing that game one day. That would be fabulous. That would be it's fabulous. incredible. And we, we'll drink your tea. Yes. <laughs> with bourbon. Of course. Is there, is there one that goes well with bourbon? I don't know. I don't drink bourbon. Well, so we'll have to try that. that. We'll just get a bunch of them out and we'll try each one. So. <laughs> you bring the bourbon. You can try that. <laughs> I drank bourbon one time in high school and it was not a pleasant experience, shall we say. Well, you're not so, supposed to overindulge, Anne. You're so <laughs> well, yeah, but when you're 17 years old, you don't know what overindulging is. The limits are off. The limits are off. <laughs> when, it hurts, <laughs> when it hurts, yeah. you've overindulged. When it hurts in anything, it, you have overindulged. <laughs> it was just sickening. So just the thought of bourbon is like, mm -hmm. and, I mean, this has been 50 years ago. So, yeah, for the memory to last that long. I'm that way about gin. I had that feel on wine because I got sick off of wine. Yes. I still have no taste for it. Boone's yeah. Farm does not count as wine. It just does. Yes, it did. <laughs> Anything along those lines, I just, oh. <laughs> Uh, and my beard, as always, you are such a joy and a pleasure, and I just I, I could listen to you for hours, hours and oh hours. My goodness. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, Elizabeth, let you and I get calendars, send me some dates, and we'll get something scheduled for me to come back. That sounds great. Yeah. All right. Every first Monday. Yeah. All right. We're going to say goodbye. Monday. Start on Monday off right. Start the month off right. Come every okay. first Monday. Okay. okay. All right, I'm going to see if I can do this right. Okay, we're done. Next. <laughs> we're done. Good. Bye. <laughs> Mark that off the list. Okay, go. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you, Ann. Thank been you fun. so very much. And thank you for saying that prayer. That yes. was very appreciated. Oh, my Appreciated. <laughs> appreciated. And that was so appreciated. I can't tell you how much we appreciated that. that. Thank you so much. Um, I go, all right, I got to figure this out today. All right, we're going to stop the recording. Bye bye, Ann. Bye, Ann. Bye bye. Thanks, Ann. Take us, care. Ann. All right, there we go. Da da! I'm getting so good at this. Betty, nobody wants to talk to us. Does nobody have any questions? Nobody. My feelings you know, are that's hurt. The way, it, that's the way it is. We we get questions, and and then when we get somebody to help us, they. But maybe that's always you know, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. they had to what get used to about? it. We had to retrain them. About our reading with Isaac tomorrow. Yeah, we can do that if you want to. I don't know that we're going to put the video up, but we will. No, no, no. 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 No video. No. Yeah, that's... I, I think we we can share what we we got on it, but I think it should stay personal between. Uh, it, but it was all good. This just really deep. So we'll talk about it tomorrow. What do you think?
And Wednesday, we have <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to get some of my ghost hunting equipment and have it here. Oh, you are? She goes through just to see if something will show up or, or be. What do you have? You know. What do you have? I think I've got an EMF meter that I can use. She's trying to go choke off. herself. I did. I was trying to strangle myself. I've got an EMF meter. Um, I wish I had. A, well, we were. It's going to be on a recording, so we need to pay attention. You know, after this show's over, to to listen to see if we capture any kind of recording and stuff. But yeah. you know, this really would be a first to have three psychics going on an investigation from a Zoom perspective with a person that's taking us there. Oh, I didn't even think of that. You're right. I think it's a first. I think this is a first, which means we're rocking the industry if that's the case. Well, you know, this is not the first time I've rocked somebody's world. <laughs> I don't do that very often, so that would that's kind of a first for me. <laughs> well, they might be busy on Wednesday with questions or even comments. You know, somebody might see something and go, hey, I yeah. see blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we might have to get Betty her own assistant. <laughs> <laughs> this is seriously. But that would be great if other people are watching as well and they see something or to give a question that you can ask um, Martha would be awesome. Well, you know what? That well, why don't we bring awesome. that up tomorrow, and we'll make sure that we remind people that they, they can go ahead and send questions in ahead of time too. Yeah, and yeah. we'll we'll do all yeah. that. And um, so this would be this would be great. Well, you know, it was interesting that she that um, Anne was talking about the intensity. There's smoke in here. The intensity of the uh, of Zoom because when we were actually talking to Isaac. And he made that one statement pertaining to the title of the spiritual network, blah, blah, blah. It knocked my computer off. I know. I was so irritated. I, mean, I literally had to go back and reboot from the very beginning. I was like, oh, my God, we're right in the middle of this. Don't fall off now. <laughs> Oh, Betty. And it dropped. I mean, bad. So that is going to be my goal is to get a new computer because this is just, I think what's happening is I'm just frying that computer even worse now with all this. Staying busy. So. Well, I have been shocked with my, my virtual parties and then what we're doing here and some other things, how intense the energy can be even in a Zoom atmosphere. You don't have to be in person. And you know, I, logically, I knew that because energy has no boundaries. But, you know, we've never really put it to the test or, you know, put it into a situation to measure it. And sometimes I am just wore out, you know. Like when we did our gallery the other night, I was wore out afterward, you know. So, um, what was I going to say? I was going to tell you something important. Damn it. Energy. Oh, we have a new logo. We have, we have a slogan, not a logo. We have a slogan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to hear it? You want to hear it, Betty? Shake your head, yes. Oh. <laughs> it's the holistic hardware in the spiritual neighborhood. That's who we are. Isn't that right? Did I get it right? I think it is. The holistic hardware store in the spiritual neighborhood. That's who we are. Yeah. That's where you come to get all your stuff. The holistic tool. toolbox of the metaphysical world. Not metaphysical. We don't use the word metaphysical. Cool. We don't use. You the got the video. We'll go back and listen. I wrote it down. Hang on a minute. Damn it. Oh, I wrote you it both down. Doing a lot of writing. I was not writing, and I'm glad I was able to focus on that when we got the video. So. Oh my! I I have so many pages here. It is unbelievable. I wrote it down. Oh my God! Where is it? Oh my god. I even put a star by it. No, I wrote that down. Okay, now that's just crazy. Where is it? I'm going to have to go back and listen to the whole tape. I can't believe it. Where is this? Yeah, I've had it. We're the holistic hardware store. We have your tools. Yep. 
the spiritual that. neighborhood. We are the holistic hardware store. We have your tools or we have your spiritual tools. So we don't sell cars and we don't sell ice cream. We sell tools. <laughs> Man, that was pretty cool. The holistic hardware store. Yeah, which is really funny because my first job was being at a hardware store. It was called Homer's Home Improvement, and he wore suspenders. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was kind of apropos. The holistic hardware store. store. I like it. I do too. We will hammer you, and we will hammer you till you get it right. <laughs> And we will saw nail off those that. nail that. <laughs> and we will saw off those pieces you don't need. <laughs> I won't screw you either. I had a guy that worked with me. He was an older guy. His name was Perry. He had beautiful white hair and this beautiful white mustache. And he was a Cajun and he had that Cajun accent. And any time I was in a bad mood, he'd want to make me laugh. He'd try to pick up something and act like he's going to drop it. And he goes, he goes, it's like trying to carry a dead body. Do you know how many times I carried a dead body out into the bayous? <laughs> he goes, we cages are crazy. We'll get rid of the body. Those gators love good human meat. Ew. 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 <laughs> he was a mess. <laughs> yeah. Chomp, chomp. Oh, my God. He was a mess. <laughs> gators. Ooh. Oh, Lord have mercy have on my soul. Have you ever had fried gator? Have you I have. actually had gator? I have. It's good. When it's, it's good. So is rattlesnake. Well, <laughs> you can only eat so much of it. It's kind of like frog legs. They kind of taste like chicken at first, but after you eat a few of them. <laughs> It doesn't oh. take like to give me more. Oh my god! The worst experience of my life was with frog legs. We'd gone to California and stayed with my great uncle, and so my aunt was oh she was gonna cook it. So what did she put in this? You know, in the skillet, it's frog legs. And so I, nine years old, and I'm walking over there, kind of looking, and they jump. <laughs> they jump. Oh, just. Like, boom. <laughs> you have to soak them in salt water. Anytime you make wild game, you cook wild, you have to soak it in salt water to get, you know. Oh, I would be so skinny in Survivor. Oh, <laughs> Any of you ever tried frog legs? Well, it, it's good at first, and then after a few of them, you just kind of like. I've had that. bear meat. I've had frog legs, I've had gator, no. I've had rattlesnake, I've had armadillo. Mm -hmm. I'm from the south. How can you Oh, oh you know? I like calamari. That's just a fancy oh. name for squid. Fry. Baby squid. Only fry. Only fry. That's a no, fancy name. Fry. I don't eat anything from I do not eat anything from the sea. Oh. I love seafood. I don't Why is it fry? Fried oysters, fried catfish. I can't do fried. We don't do fried. Mm -hmm. get, now, when I was growing up, we had to, you know, we had catfish. I mean, we you eat what what you can get, and we had catfish. And our family always knew how to cook it really, really well, and it was always good. But it always frightened me because, you know, I'd have relatives that had bones get stuck in their throat and all this. It's like, why do you go through that? <laughs> it just looks like, no, we're not doing that. So I don't, I don't. You know I, what don't the, I don't eat anything from the sea. It's got to be filleted. If it's not filleted, I don't care. I ain't eating it. The best fish in the uh, world. The best fish in the world is rainbow trout that you cook and you know, that you catch in a, a clear stream or river. You grill it in mm -hmm. a pan on a fire, and the little piece of meat up in the cheek area is the best piece of food you will ever put in your mouth. That little cheek piece right there. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, what is wrong with her? Cooking. All right, the, I'm, the, Betty, the, Betty, just don't don't even look at them. What's wrong with them? <laughs> <laughs> no, Betty, it's okay. Don't be sending me no fit. That's okay. No. Don't ask me to try it. No, no, no. it's down. She's she's down on my screen. Yeah. What is wrong? She's not from the South. She's, oh. she's not really from the South. 
Yeah, no. She's bougie. You're just bougie. <laughs> bourgeois. You are so bourgeois. Bourgeois. <laughs> bourgeois. Yeah. Ooh la la. Yeah, bourgeois. Uh, I'm, I'm not a. I am not a, a fish person or anything. I don't like. Every once in a while, and I mean in a great while. What? Well, now my mom loved uh, seafood, and her favorite was. Uh, Crab cakes from um, I love crab different cakes. places. I love crab cakes. And every once in a while, I take a bite of those. You know, every once in a while, she say, "Oh, you gotta try this. You gotta try this." Like, oh, okay, but it, it's not my favorite, and it does not agree with me. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't agree with me. Well, deep so down, she was glad you didn't like it because it was just more for her. Of course, she was like, oh, "Don't eat my food." <laughs> I'm just being nice because I'm your mother. I yeah. know you're not going to eat it. I, maybe that's why she looks so funny when I said, okay. <laughs> I loved it when my kids didn't like what I ate because then I didn't have to share it with them. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that now. I can see that now. I, I should have really been more more aware of that. Like, she didn't want me to have it. <laughs> she's just being nice. Yeah, there's a limitation to motherhood. Well, I'm just being nice. I didn't want you to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, there are limits to motherhood. Sense. You know, don't be touching my chili mac. Yeah. Don't touch my fish. Oh, and let me throw out one more thing. Are we gonna be on for an hour when she Yes when Martha's on yes. Wednesday? Yes, a full hour. So just get ready for okay. a ride. And we're still starting at twelve fifteen? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, hey, here's, right. the, here's the other thing. I'm going to start promoting this on air, too. We're trying to do a book by the end of the year. If you have read anything like the Chicken Soup books, and there's all kinds of other books out there where they're like short stories that are compiled together to make one big book that are center around a theme, we are doing a book around holistic healers. So what we want is a story about how you got into your journey it's, you know, what took you into your journey to become a holistic healer, whether you're a comedian, artist, pianist, what, you know, acupuncturist, functional medicine, Reiki, whatever, okay? And I want probably, I think 25 stories is a good round number, don't you think? And then if you give us this story, we will print it, and we'll also put your bio in the book with your picture, okay? And then you will now have a book that you are featured in and it will be for sale because I have the, the setup for this not only on Amazon but all of the international Amazons and Barnes and Noble websites and all these other things so you will now be featured in this book wow. so, so you're now published you are technically published it will be a you know part of a, a chain of books so that will add credibility to it and if you are so inclined, you can order uh, books by sets of 10 and do your own book signing or have them for sale at fairs or wherever you have uh, your meetings or whatever. And it's the easiest way to get started in publishing your own books without having to sit down and write a two or 300 page book. I, this is how I got my start. I was featured in the Chicken Soup book uh, for children with special needs years ago. I actually met the people behind the Chicken Soup series at um, an international um, networking thing that I went to for a week in California, and they liked me and took my story and pushed it through because they already had shut off the deadline and I got in. It was awesome. You will not get paid for this story. We do not have the funds to pay you. But you will be published, you will be featured, and you sell your own books. So that's the beauty of it. Wow. What a deal. I think so. Seriously. I think so. Oh, my God. What yeah. a deal. Yeah. I think we so. a lot of wonderful, basic people on the show that can, can contribute to that book. And it would... Oh, my God. We got 25 people just in the guest alone. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking, you know, and and they all have wonderful, fascinating stories, you know. I mean, my God, Anne could just talk yeah. forever. We could do a whole book on Anne. <laughs> she is so, she is so fascinating. She really is. I just love her. She is just, she's, and she's just a good, good person. Well, I adore she's her. She's always looking for the positive. I do. I'm always looking for the positive in things. I like her accent. <laughs> yeah. 
She is a true native. Of what? We don't know, but she is a native. No, we're not sure. <laughs> of kindness, of goodness. Yeah. She is a true, she is the, she's the Texan that I, that I love. That's the Texan I love. The one who wants to help support people, help people, who sees no color, who just sees people. She just sees individuals. And it's either you're doing good deeds or you're not doing good deeds. That's the Texan I love. That's my Texas. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. And we help people. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because we're not really talking about what's going on right now in the outer world. No. But the reason for that is I think, because we didn't discuss this as a group, but I think it's because we're just focused on what we can do that's positive. And if we're doing something positive, it's going to help all the situations. For me personally, I will just say I am heartbroken. I am heartbroken over the circumstances right now. And I, if you want to know more about what I think, I posted it on my Facebook. Go read it. Uh, I think I pretty much said what I think that we should be doing and, and how to handle that. And if you don't like it, tough. I don't care. So, so let's, let's run, run by real quick. What's this week? Again, before we close, because we're on an hour right now. It's us so, tomorrow. Martha's Wednesday at the Haunted um, House in Mineral Wells. Who's Thursday? John Capello. Oh, okay. That's John on. Capello. And he's got something to say. I've been looking at his John Facebook. Capello being in action right now with our all of this, and that's what's going on with all the stuff going on in the world. And then we have our wonderful, angelic, loving Kay Horn. <gasps> oh, is Kay this week? On Friday. It's oh, my Friday. God. Oh, my Friday. God. I'm so excited. Yeah. And we, we do have a few new people. Lots of good stuff this week. Yeah. Yeah, we have new people coming next week so you know but this week we're full of amazing people and if you say. missed audra watley last week her video oh. is up and she's coming back too bad. The... that's just too bad <laughs> i'm setting my appointment up with her if you wait and see i am setting up my appointment with her she um, uh you ought to videotape it let us we ought to schedule it during our session well, i will i will i will i will it'll be that adventure It'll be an adventure, and you know, it's, I'll be leaving to go there, and this is what's happening, and this is what we're going to do, and then whatever. Isn't, I'll do that. isn't she coming back the 29th of June? Did we have? But I don't know. Did we? Did, uh, Audra, Audra? Yeah. Um, the 29th of this month? Mm, yeah. You're good memory. 29. I remember I numbers. Memory. I remember right. numbers. I don't remember names. Names yeah, suck. It'll be on the 29th again, yes. But I remember Audra's because I have a good friend named Audra. So I made the connection. So. My and head book, is vibrating. Book is fabulous. Have you noticed that I cannot so stop doing this? My head is vibrating today. Is anybody else feeling that? It's, it's just. Not that intense, but a little bit. Oh. I just want to go put my head in a bucket of ice water. Well, I went this morning, I got outside, I took a little dog bed, because we've got several of them, and sat in the middle of the yard, sat down on the dog bed with the <laughs> pecans for the squirrels. <laughs> and I sat in the middle of my yard, backyard, this morning. it was beautiful, it was cool, and fed the squirrel. <laughs> and watched the cops flying around, so. Well, that's that's so sweet. Funny. I uh, think that's sweet. That's nice. <laughs> I, I love my squirrel. My squirrel, she's you love your squirrels. That squirrel loves you. That is so sweet. You know, we all we all have our totem animal, and Gail's is the squirrel. I love the squirrel. I love the squirrel. Kim's <laughs> funny. Andre makes fun of me about the squirrel. <laughs> well, it makes you happy. Uh, so I got really grounded. Sitting outside on the on the ground, and but but it's just that's why I feel so good right now. So there's good. Gale, and there's Squirrel, and there's Nuts, and there's a hawk. The hawk that and and I got my feathers, and it's not the only ones from my hawk. So that's our subject matter. Discuss them among yourselves. That's awesome. <laughs> but anyway, that's awesome. Those yeah. feathers. Yes. So anyway. <laughs> Do, uh, do we want to read our closing and say goodbye to everybody? Oh, I don't care. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Please do. First, Betty, even though we didn't have any questions for you to read today, we appreciate you being here. You know what I like about Betty being Thank here? Thank you so much. I get to watch her face when y'all are talking and something else is going on. I love Betty's hair. I just love her hair. Thank you. Betty, 
Absolutely. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have a poker game with us four because I'm going to whip y'all because y'all are all so easy to read from your face. <laughs> hey, I've got a good poker face, I tell you. Oh, I yeah. I used to play poker back in my early 20s. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> No. no. Thank you, Larry. You know, she's like my, she's like our mother. Y'all behave. Get out of the mud. Don't get Don't wet. Behave. 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 Don't make me say that again. I'll wear you out. <laughs> Don't run with that. You'll poke your Don't eye out. That one. Don't make me get that one. You know what Isaac said. Don't make me get the one. Oh, she got the wand out. Oh, my God. You know oh, what? The wand. But you know what? A lion, a lion can chew that wand up and spit it out. We're going to share that <laughs> tomorrow. What what cards we got and what we were. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. my God. Because I think he was uh, dyslexic on, uh, on several. What? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? We'll discuss that tomorrow. Oh, my God. Yay. Oh my God! I thought he was spot on. I just thought he was spot uh, on. He was. Especially me he when he, actually, well, he he told me how great I was, Betty. He kept telling me how great I was. <laughs> That's not a surprise. Look, she's got the wand out. Oh my God! Well, I'm gonna get my scepter. My scepter. <laughs> we'll be here tomorrow. I will we'll, have my we'll scepter share everything. tomorrow. We'll share well, okay. night. We'll share quite a bit tomorrow. Did you so. read the closing yet? Did I miss it? I, I tried two times, but it. Uh, uh, Third time's the charm. Okay, everybody. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your time and energy with us at the Spiritual Neighborhood Lunch Bunch. We are a community project of the Council of Families for Children. To, to contact any one of the hosts, Elizabeth, Gail, or Deborah, email us at spiritualneighborhoodgmail.com. And don't be shy to ask to be a guest on our show until we eat again because it is lunchtime. Stay, whole, uh, stay safe and stay whole. And all of June, all of June is pretty much full. So if you want to be on the show, you got to schedule for July because we're getting to be oh, yeah, yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah. I think we got one day maybe left on June. Yeah. To so we, it's almost book solid. Yeah. So. so we're ready to start in July. So you know, start contacting us. And Betty, thank you so much for being with us, and we look forward to having you back every day. And uh, if nothing else, I just feel like um, you bring a. Uh, some more to the table, you know, just it's somebody else to look at. <laughs> you know, another. You are very brave. Let me say that. You are very brave. Or foolish. Brave or foolish. Or both. Hey, yeah. Brave. Foolish. <laughs> All right. Everybody wait. Bye. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Oh, wait a minute. Bye, everybody. Wait a minute. Oh, this was already turned off. Never mind. <laughs> All right. How do I turn this off? She's got to stop the recording. <laughs> Dang.